So, Andrew, um, you're with Bureau Happold and you're the Director of Security. Um, mm. How important is it that whenever we're designing our buildings or infrastructure that security is designed in from the outset? Well, I think operationally, um, consequences happen if it's, it's in integrated too late. Um, you also get financial implications of actually trying to make uh, the big wheel of design of a facility uh, change that are later on, uh, later, later design stage. And there's many examples where security has been bolted on after the event and it never is a, is, you know, it's a bit of a sort of juxtapositioning of how, of, of measures that don't actually work and blend together very well. So, you know, when you need to go into the formative, formative stages of a project, which is normally, you know, right at the very beginning. In fact, actually at board level, when they decide on the finance for a project, to say, we will be designing security into this building, we will be taking it seriously. It won't be all about equipment and kit and cameras. It'll be about a blend of the ethos of this organisation, coupled you know, with the financial sort of prowess that we're going to put into you know, invest in this building, because that's the only way we're going to get security designed in from the beginning. Um, it's too late once you're sort of once you've appointed your architects and your engineers. It's normally a, it, it's always a very difficult exercise to get it done properly. But you know, with all the kit that's out there, a measurement of success and security when you've got your building or infrastructure finished is that nothing happens. How do you justify that financially at the beginning of a project? Well, first of all, I must correct you. So measure of success isn't about nothing happening. It's, all, it's actually um, about how you recover from something happening. So you're almost like if you w walk into the situation expecting something to happen, an organisation is best sort of, uh, you know, you reflect on how a measure of success of how you deal with something, whether it's a flood or, in fact, a terrorist attack. Um, so nothing happening actually is not good. So... And it's not about actually putting the you know lots of kit in, um, because that's that's a simpleton's way of looking at it. You put lots of cameras and lots of equipment, and you know we're going to be fine. You actually need to start right from the very beginning about what's the culture of the organisation. How do we blend in? How do we harmonise all the the assets of security, like the people security, the the kit as you mentioned. Uh, how we look at the cyber aspects, how we look at the information, how we blend all those things together with our, our, our operational capability and in fact our stance on security. Do, you know, do we want to be burgled every week? You know, maybe that, they want to be burgled. So you know, that's a good way of measuring success. We want to be burgled every week, we're going to put signs up. But perhaps we don't want to get burgled. <laughs> so you measure success, I think, on blending and harmonising the efforts and, and measures at your disposal um, and do it at a very early stage, mm. and, um, and also how you recover from an incident. So do you think we can sell security as a business-enabling um, uh, project absolutely. rather than business-disabling? Yes, absolutely. Security, is, in fact, you should perhaps change the name of security to something else. Um, business continuity is perhaps not a good risk being used by someone else. But um, security always has the sort of, um, in, in, in sort of connotations of fortress... Uh, Fortress UK or Fortress or prisons and things, and sometimes when you're in too late on a project, the architect turns around and not. I'm not just using that as an example. You're, you know, why are you trying to design a bunker for me? Mm. Um, whereas actually, perhaps, you know, you don't need to do that. Maybe there's something else you can, you know, you can remove the problem of having to design a bunker mm. in the first place, mm. and actually spend less money. Mm. So there you go on that one. So how important do you think it's going to be for the designing um, out? or designing in security at the UK Security Expo at the end of November? Oh, I think if, if there's one message you should get across is do it early and think about the broad spectrum. Don't just think about the little bits of security, your kit, as you mentioned. Think of the whole broad thing, list of things that you can use at disposal and work out, measure, you know, work out how much of each one is required on that particular project. So design it out early, very early and appropriately. And do you think it's um, important that we've got a forum to be able to swap best practice mm -hmm. and get those ideas out into the community? Yes, I think security is just learning how to um, to do its stuff, I think. There's too many pockets in security. Um, you know, it's almost like uh, herding, herding cats, you might say. Um, if all those cats listened and actually worked together, I think you'd have a very, very effective and quite strong and concise force that can actually deliver some of these things. And, you know, I think a lot of it's also educating clients that, you know, do these things at the right time, mm. as opposed to when it's too late. So we need greater convergence in our different breeds of cats? Uh, <laughs> um, I'd say better behaved cats, actually. Um, <laughs> but no, I think if you have, if you have slightly more, um, if your cats were slightly more um, aware 
of the consequences of failure, we talked about success before, um, then there, there may be some cognizance of perhaps let's do this and get, you know, let's muck in together, look at a broad range of assets and broad range of things that we can do and see how we can best apply those rather than just sticking on one particular asset and hoping it works. Andrew, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Philip. Bye-bye.